fastest bowlers in the world return to Carroll Air Lanes in North Brunswick for the championship round of the Johnny Petraglia Open. Now, let's meet our standing field of finalists. Fifth seed looking for back-to-back -back wins from Bel Air, Maryland, Tim Chris. His opening opponent owns 22 titles. Defending champion from Stockton, California, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Third seed is a former PBA Rookie of the Year. Four career wins from Tarpon Springs, Florida, Steve Hoskins. Our semifinal match features Pete Weber from St. Anne, Missouri. The 1991 winner here. And our tournament leader was inducted into the PBL Hall of Fame earlier this year, the pride of Venezuela, Amleto Monticelli. Standing room only crowd as Bo Burton and I look on, and Bo, there is a good top prize. You're right, Chris. Uh, nice payday for all the players. Four out of the top ten players in the world in our field today. We're ready for a rematch of Seagram Open two weeks ago, where Chris defeated Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Number one in the world in the blue shirt. We'll sit and watch with you, Tim Chris from Bel Air, his sixth finals in 1997, and only his ninth TV appearance in his years as a professional. 30 years old, first shot on the left lane. I hit leaving the 4-7. Tim Chris, who has been the most outstanding player so far this year that was not a name player coming into the year, winning two titles, going for his third. He's already won $68,000. You see his angle to the pocket. He's to the left side throwing that what now is known as the turtle ball, that nice soft 16 mile an hour speed and breaks up the 4 six, seven split. So Tim from Bel Air, Maryland has Mark with a spare. Now here's your first look today. The number one in the world, player of the year last year, and in two of the years, 86 and 93, Walter Ray Williams. Oh, yes. Walter Ray Williams, Jr. He is hot. He is uh, in his eighth television appearance, 94th television appearance overall. King of the 90s, Bo. Yep, he's boiled great. Chris, and he just has a tremendous natural ability. So there you have an opening double by the premier player, Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Now Tim Chris moving far to the left on the approach. Uses the, working. uses the full approach, slides very close to the foul line. Another high hit, didn't get the break this time, Nelson. Well, Chris, he plays such a soft ball, he doesn't muscle the ball into the pocket like Walter Ray Williams does, and when he hits a little bit left of his target, he's asking for trouble. With that ball speed, as you see him sliding the foul line, not giving him much room, he doesn't get a chance to break up the splits. So it's an open here in our first game of the afternoon, the Johnny Petraglia Open. Johnny will be joining us for the next game. Seventh year that uh, they have staged this event at Carrier Lanes and put Johnny's name on it. Tim Chris is going to play an angle somewhere here. Watch how close he slides to the foul line. His approach will be in this area, up to here, and swing the ball out between the second and third arrows. Needed a break to clear the 10 pin off the left lane. You see Chris's ball leave the soft 10. The second pin on the right hand part of your screen, the six pin, doesn't have enough impetus to get up and kick the 10 out. He doesn't have enough ball speed for the head pin to come around and bird dog the 10. So he's left with an easy spare. So Walter Ray is quickly up. At six foot two inch frame, 180 pounds in top shape, and Tim, that you're looking at now, is 5'10", 175. Great part of bowling, you can be any size and shape and do well. Three in a row. He won 
16 and lost eight. In the final block, he won seven of eight, so he was hot last night. Oh, baby! Hot today. Okay, we're in Carolina Lanes in North Brunswick, New Jersey, where we'll return after this. Okay, back again at Carriner Lanes, Walter A. Williams Jr. Four strikes in a row. Bo, that gives him a 46 pen lead. He's hot. Well, Walter Ray, I feel, is the best and most versatile player in the world. Tim Chris is the new upstart on the block, and he's backed up here in this match. He trails by 46 pins. Coming up in the fourth frame, has to get his act together because Walter will not look back. So, the initial strike for Tim. To just join us, uh, the winner will meet Steve Hop Hoskins and then Pete Weber, followed by Amleto Monicelli, the tournament leader. The advantage of throwing the ball a little bit slower like Tim Chris is you, you don't knock the pins up in the air so you get fewer taps, and obviously it's easier to keep your arm swing and your balance and your slide all intact. He's a good stroke. Nice double by Tim. So the fifth frame now for Walter Ray Williams K.R. Same percentage as he has done in horseshoes, Bo. <laughs> he's, he's something. Well, he's rolled uh, 61 consecutive 200 games over two tournaments when he bowled on the tour back in 1993. And uh, ironically, Chris, or not ironically, he's bowled 100, or rolled 114 straight ringers. Broken up at five with a 10-10. Here it. Now here we see a little more ball speed. Did you wait till after the out of thanks. As uh, Walter's talking to the crowd, we see a little more ball speed out of Walter, and that's going to drive the pins up in the air, and he left a solid 10. And uh, basically, I don't really know if it, it affected the pin carry, but somebody yelled out right before he released the ball, and he kind of flinched. So still got a pretty good result. And very politely asked the crowd if they could wait till after he <laughs> delivered the punch, the bowling ball. All right, okay. But he's hot, and I don't blame him. Tim Chris. Now let's look at his full approach. The approaches are 17 feet long. This man is a well-practiced player. He's standing up there. That's the second row of dots. You look on the right-hand part of your screen. is 12 feet from the foul line, so he's about 13 feet back. Precision player has done tons of practice. Watch how close he comes to the line. Oops. <laughs> He's wired. Well, this is about as much as he could possibly miss. I don't think he could miss this far if he was trying. The ball slid off his hand. He got it just about five boards left of his intended target. And crosses unusual shot, a 3-9 spare conversion in front of Tim Chris. Take care of that sleeper. Next Saturday is special time, 1 Eastern, 2 Central, and 3 Pacific. It's the IOF Foresters Open from Ontario, Canada, Toronto, where last year's crown went to Dave Traber. That's next Saturday at 1 Eastern, 2 Central, and 3 Pacific. So on a little earlier in the Eastern time zone, but in St. Louis, my hometown, our regular time as you look at Sherry Chris, knowing her husband is in trouble in this match. He trails by 47. <laughs> Ten pen for Tim Chris, who's a mother-in-law, Mary, or March Chris, actually his mother, is here, rooting him on. He'll need that and more in this game. Forty-eight pen lead as we look at Sherry. And yes, we are again in North Brunswick, New Jersey, where even the wildlife knows it's springtime. A 
Thank you all to Ray Williams Jr. Smile as we're talking to you from an area about a little more than an hour from downtown Manhattan, North Brunswick. So six out of seven strikes if you just joined us in this first match against Jim Chris. All right, that's good. And Parker Bone is over on the side with the man who will probably meet Walter Ray Williams Jr., Parker Steve Hoskins. Steve, you sustained an injury earlier this year. Is that going to affect you in any way today? Uh, no, I don't think it will. I switched to 14-pound uh, Tritons earlier in the week just to keep my hand from getting fatigued. Yeah, well, I think he's ready to get him. Crowd reacting to Walter Ray's shot. Watch this pin action. Probably the most unusual strike I've seen in years, Chris. A pin gets trapped over on the left-hand side, rolls around and kicks out the 10. That I have not seen before. Great break for Walter Ray Williams Jr. in the eighth. Tim leaving another 10 pin. And it looks like Walter's opponent, as you look at Tim Chris, six rounds, 42 games, 18 qualifying. One, two, and three are six game rounds. Three, four, four, five, and six are eight game rounds. But Steve Hoskins, uh, as we said, Chris, he had a hand injury, broke his hand. He was out for four weeks and uh, just recovering. And it's fun to watch him throw that big rainbow shot. So he'll be coming up against Walter Ray, who has a possible 279. Now Chris could follow it out, finish it out with 210. It'll be a $6,000 check for this likable young man and very successful this year. He won from the top seed and he won from the number five seed, but today not as successful. Paige Pennington. Tonight on ABC, Soul Man's Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Anna Chumlomsky star in the network premiere of My Girl 2. And on Saturday night at the movies, that's when you can watch My Girl 2. Then Randy Quaid, Sean Young, Sally Cullerman, and Daryl Hannah star in a brand new episode of the critically acclaimed Gun. All tonight on ABC. Walter reacting to the first strike in the 10th frame, puts him in position for a 279. This locks him into the 260s. He has the match well in hand. It's just by how much is he going to win? an opening game score for Walter Ray. <laughs> 268 for the King. Chris just finishing out. If he finishes with three more strikes, we'll have a 210 and a nice paycheck. <laughs> Tim Chris had to get out of his game plan, Chris. He's moved to the right. He's throwing it much harder and straighter down the outside, and that's not his favorite shot. Spare here, 199, creditable score, but Walter Ray Williams Jr. has won the first match. Tim has really had a good year, 68,001 on the lanes from the two victories. And no, but strike on the that. Okay, 199. As this ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowler Show will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. The Professional Bowlers Tour on ABC Sports. Brought to you by the owners, managers, and crew who proudly call the McDonald's in your neighborhood, my McDonald's. Kellogg's, with good taste, nutrition, and value. The best you each morning from Kellogg's. And New Tagamet HB 200 for heartburn. It blocks acid fast with New Tagamet HB 200. 
Well, I'm glad they could get together. <laughs> Springtime. And there you see the result of our first match. Walter Ray winning at 268 to Tim Chris's 199. An exciting event. Has a great name on it, too. The Johnny Petraglia Open. And uh, here he is. Great to have you on. Thanks, Chris. It's great being back. The uh, first match was pretty exciting. Uh, Walter, I thought, was really going to bowl 300. I, uh, he looks so lined in. I think if he gets by the ring in 10, that uh, he tries a little harder in the 11th frame. Okay. Well, Johnny, you know uh, scores are part of residue of how the oils lay down the lane, so let's take a look at it. Right here you can see that the oil is down 38 feet on the lane. We have a heavier concentration in this area, and then it tapers down gets a little bit lighter. And as you see, it goes down, and we call this kind of the Christmas tree effect. And if you can get your ball through the heads and slide in that hook area right down there at 38 feet, that's the optimum scoring angle. And John, uh, obviously uh, this is a Jersey oil, so uh, what do you think of the oil pattern out here this week? Well, I think that, uh, well, first of all, Walter ball great this week because the oil pattern is conducive to somebody that hooks the ball quite a bit. If the head oil in the front half of the lane holds up, then the, the talented players that are on the show with that kind of game will score. And... Um, but I think people have to remember that, say, a Parker Bone and a Pete Weber are equal in talent and that the oil pattern is really what can separate the two of them. And obviously it did this week as Parker was nowhere in sight. So we'll see what the right-handers can do this, these last three games. Walter Ray, red hot. Another, another 10 pen. All right. John, an interesting thing that I have privy information to, even though you're at your house here, is Walter's going to throw a little slower on 35 because it's tighter, and simply tighter because lane 36, there's a two-inch upgrade from the front of the lane to the back, and that makes the ball hook a little bit more as it slows down. So watch for Walter to throw harder on the right-hand lane. Yes, and I think that will be very critical for the uh, for the uh, three remaining right-handers that hook the ball quite a bit, Bo, because uh, we'll have to see if they can adjust to both lanes. Tim Chris seemed to have a little bit of trouble on 36 because of that. Good point, now John. Steve Hoskins, who won at Sunrise last year, but has had an injury since. That's a nice break, Johnny. Well, Steve is uh, is a superpower player. He's the he's the type. As long as he can get the ball to the right, you're you're really going to see a lot of uh, power from his game, and his swing gets loose. One thing about Steve, when he starts striking, he can strike all day. Twenty-eight year old. We've always enjoyed having him on our telecast, Johnny. It's his thirteenth time, and he can uh, get very excited with good shots. you think uh, maybe a little over adjustment there on the tighter lane? He did look a little bit softer than he did in the first round. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good point, John, in that the big hook ball bowlers like lanes to hook. When they go straight and down and in, their ball hooks too soon, and that's what they don't like. If you were going to bowl a home-and-home -home match against a big cranker, you'd bowl him on slick lanes in your house. They don't like to have to point the ball up as he makes a major mistake. Oh, a major mistake against Walter very early. Uh, you give Walter that 12-pin lead sitting on the bench, and when he's lined up like he is now, and watch out. Center of the lane, as we know here at Carroll Air, hooks a little bit more on the outside. And had trouble with the spare. All right, Parker Bone, uh, the third, a native son. Two-time winner this year, Parker. Tim, Chris, it looks like you ran into a little steamroller there with Walter Ray. Uh, it looked like you had a little problem yourself. Yeah, during the end of practice session, a little oil carry down on my break point, and uh, I didn't know which way to go. I moved left first, and I just never felt comfortable, and I probably should have played it a little bit more like Walter Ray, but he's got a great reaction. He'll go well this week. There you have it, Chris. He'll be back next week. Okay. this reaction. Always really happy about tripping the four there. Chris, he knew he got, a, uh, got it up the lane a little bit and was worried about the throwing a split. All right. S Steve's second strike in the game. Yeah, here's the critical shot with Steve. He's nice and loose on the right lane, and he'll, uh, whether he makes a good shot here or over adjusts, uh, is going to be really important because he doesn't want to be down 22 pins very early in the match. 
he has two options. He can stay over here as he has and throw the ball a little bit slower or crank it up a little bit more. Let's see what he goes with. He likes the power. He should saw on this one. Left the two pin. Could have cut the lead to 12, but... Well, I think what's interesting here is it's an over-adjustment. He was a little bit soft in the first frame, and, and a common uh, error that's made on TV is you adjust off a bad shot. Uh, I think if he would have kept the same speed, he probably would have hit the pocket. Okay, we're in our second game with the Johnny Petragli Open, Carolyn Lanes in North Brunswick, New Jersey, and this week our trip down memory lane spotlights the man for whom today's tournament is named. Memory Lane takes us back to 1980, and one of the many highlights of Johnny Petraglia's career. This win at the PBA National Championship, combined with his wins at the 1971 Tournament of Champions and the 1977 U.S. Open, made him the second player ever to complete Pro Bowling's Triple Crown. That's right, next week, uh, Canada. Today, it's New Jersey. We're assisted by two left-handers, Parker Bone the third, and the tournament namesake, Johnny Petraglia. And Johnny, uh, three in a row, back to his old form. Well, I think that Wolf has made a, a really interesting decision today. In practice, he was using a, uh, an all-reactive ball, trying to hook it like the rest of them, and then he said, let me go to my A game. And he wanted a ball that's half reactive, half regular urethane, and played outside, and, and he's going right at him, and it's really working well for him. You're learning how to be an announcer now, John. You can jinx him just like I do. Well, you could see him elbow his shot. Watch his arm come through. Watch that elbow. See it go out on the side like that. His ball is definitely left the target. Leaves the 7-10 split. Walter will go across lane with some good ball speed. Try to bounce the 10 into the 7. All right. His first open frame of the day after shooting a 269 in his victory over Tim Chris in the first game. And Paige Pennington. John had a good point about Steve Hoskins. Uh, he's such a kind of a bowler that he succeeds, succeeds or perishes with his attack to the lanes. He can either shoot 150 or 250. So let's see him wind up. Here. Ah, crossover, and we cross over from our location where we talk to Parker Bone the third. Here with Pete Weber. Pete, obviously you're a great player, but this year you've really turned it up a notch or two. What seems to be the reason for that? Well, Parker, I've been bowling good all year long, and, you know, as everybody knows, I've had problems with the reactive resin balls, and Brian Berg has been 50% of, of everything I've done this year. Well, there you have it, Chris. I think he's ready to roll. Okay. Brian Berg is his uh, staff member ball representative out here, as all the staff members do have somebody to assist them with their equipment. Well, ball change there. Uh, even though he won Brooklyn trip to four, he did make a ball change in the middle of the game and got a double out of it. Third pin on the left-hand part of your screen. It'll do the damage in the left-hand corner. The four pin tripped out by the two. sleeper down there which he, he knows of course that's what we, makes the sport so great Chris does. you know you see spare turkey and, and Steve Hoskins is lost and and uh, and then here we go uh, all of a sudden it's an eight pin game and Walter misses the pocket and you see how to convert the the ideal way to convert the 2-8 let the ball take out both pins Thank you. Eight pins separating these two professionals. Number one ranked Walter Ray Williams Jr. and uh, number 42nd ranked Steve Hoskins. There's Steve. This is the interesting shot. Will he adjust off the bad shot? All you greats can do that, John. Nelson. Okay, we'll be back in New Jersey after this. Later on, we'll tell you how Amleta Monicelli scorched the lanes here last night to get into the number one spot. 
Right now it's Steve Huskins going against Walter Ray Williams Jr. Steve can take the lead with a third strike in a row here in the seventh frame. He trails by eight. There he's reacting to Steve Hoskins we know. Uh, he went to a duller ball here, which moves a little earlier and stops a little bit in the back end. And uh, so the back end is in a violent reaction. And so far it's working for him. Put a little squeeze on Walter Ray right here if Hoskins can strike in the eighth. He leads by two. Johnny, we um, have a little split to work on. Well, that left lane um, is, is a lot different than the right lane, and, and uh, Walt is the only one that's really conquered it. Uh, Steve's been light and high and, and, and defense of him. It wasn't his fault that time. I thought that ball was going to make it. Mm -hmm. he tried to make a good shot. You see how to convert the split, get the ball to the left of the two pin, slide it into the ten. Open in the eighth frame of the second game in the Johnny Petraglia Open, and now he trails by 14. Uh, Steve pulled it just a little bit, just almost made it. Ball grabbed a little soon on him. Here's pounce time right here. Walter wants to put him away right here on his good lane. Coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the European Masters of Gymnastics Championship, including men's and women's team competition. Also, the Pimlico Special, where the older horses race the week before the three-year-olds run at the Preakness, plus the Valvoline Indianapolis time trials from the Brickyard. Coming up next on Wide World of Sports. I think he's ready today. Mm -hmm. that, was, uh, that was one of those frames where you know if I mark out him in the two teens and the other guy would have to strike out and you a lot of times invariably leave that flat 10 because you want to trust the Walter stuff, but he's really ready to win today. Right now, Hoskins has got to go in here. He's got to go with his eighth shot. He needs strikes. Yeah. Winner of this game will meet Pete Weber. Hoskins has a chance in this game if he can strike out. He has a potential 212. Walter Ray Williams Jr. going at a 226 pace. That would force Walter to get a, at least a decent count on his first ball. If he gets a short count, he would have to mark. So it's imperative that Hoskins gets two more strikes or it's the end of his day. that ball hit like a pumpkin well I think uh, I think that he actually did throw the ball extremely well on, a, on the lane that he was really struggling on he he tried to fit it a little bit but when you're not hitting the pocket and you really need it he threw it pretty good it just didn't uh, flip the way it was supposed to in the back end and left that half ten possible one and ninety two for Hoskins will not be enough today Johnny, and a chance to congratulate you on the way you run this tournament, you and Lee Livingstone, especially the uh, charity aspect of it, it's tremendous. Oh, well, thank you, Chris. I'd like to mention that Danny Wiseman and Martin Frost won the wheelchair vets uh, pro doubles tournament and ironically sponsored by Carolina Lane's That's each. <laughs> The oohs and ahs of the crowd, a solid seven by Walter Ray, a hit we didn't see much of here or any time this year traveling around the country, but he's got the match well in hand. Watch the four pin, the second pin on the left hand part of your screen is going to jump right up in the air, boom, right over the seven. Walter will be in the 220s. And uh, Johnny, there's Paige Pennington, but in the audience is one of my favorite moms. Grace Draglia. Yeah, my mom and my dad are both here uh, sitting near my son mm -hmm. and uh, uh, actually uh, right next to Lee Livingston. I'm glad they can get here this year. Well, we want to wish Grace and all the moms, including Debbie. Um, 
Happy Mother's Day tomorrow. Okay, Walter Ray has won his second nine meets Pete Weber. This week's Bo's Tip of the Week focuses on target shooting. Today's tip spotlights spare and split conversions. With me is Scott. Now, Scott, where do you stand for your strike ball? Right here on the green line. Okay, you're on the green line. You've missed the head pin, left the one, two, four spare. Very simple to make it. Move five boards to the right of the approach, as signified by the red tape, and roll the ball over your strike spot. Let's give it a shot. Real good. Great shot. Good lesson to learn here. For splits and spares, some of the very common ones, a simple adjustment off your strike target will make the spare. The 245, the 124, the washout, the 57, the 510, and of course that evil 49 split. And now I'm with Taryn. Taryn, where do you stand for your strike ball? Right here on the green mark. All right, pal. Now, you've left the 245 spare down there. If you'll just move four boards to the right of the approach, as signified by the red tape, and roll it over your strike target, you'll make that spare. Real good. Nice shot, pal. Remember, you can use your strike target on the lane to convert a lot of the common spares and splits just by moving back and forth on the approach. Okay, we're back again at Carroller Lanes in New Jersey. Walter Ray Williams Jr. has won two. He had nine strikes in his first victory, seven uh, in his 225 over Steve Hoskins, 192. And now, the dream match, Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Pete Weber. There's a dream director with us so long from ABC, Lifetime Achievement of the Directors Guild, Larry Cam. There's Grace Petraglia we were talking about and her husband, Bill, Johnny's parents. They have to be so proud, Chris, of uh, John and all the things he's done. As we look at the top 24, they had an all-time record 3,617 pro-am entries here. In the number six spot, a amateur high roller bore, Mike Newman almost made the top five in one of the most interesting matches of the year as Amleto de Monticelli last night defeated him 300 to 299, and that prevented Newman from being in the top five. We go down the line, David Traver, who will be the defending champion next week at the IOF Foresters. The big D up there, Bob Learn. Roger Bonker's got some new Bonker fan club t-shirts coming out. We're looking forward to those. Steve Wilson, steady as usual. Joe Barkett, a nice week. The national champion, Rick Steelsmith. Jimmy Johnson threw two strikes to qualify for the top 24. Phil Brainer and Kelly Bennett round out the 24 finalists this week. A great group of bowlers, believe me. Wonderful field, and of course here are our upcoming stops. The IOF Foresters open at special time from Ontario, 1 o'clock Eastern, uh, 2 Central, and 3 Pacific. Then uh, we go to away for one week. We follow up with the Harrisburg Open, and it's another special time at 2.30 Eastern. So those are our next two telecasts with a week off between. <laughs> now, the dream match, Pete Weber and Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Pete passed Walter Ray in the career earnings mark by about 32,000 now. Okay. There will be some psyching going on in this match, folks. Look at that late break in that ball, Nelson. Well, two of the best bowlers that ever hit the PBA Tour. Uh, I, I really think the edge in this match goes to Walter Ray Williams Jr. You're going to see the style of Pete Weber. This is the lane that's been somewhat inextricable for the, the real big cranker players. Walter has hit it, but the guys playing the big hook, as such as Pete, have had trouble. Let's see what he does. They 
driving a seven pin on that lane bow. Well, it just hangs, Chris. The, mm -hmm. Almost every pair in this house at Carroll Air Lanes, as you see Pete's style, the left-hand lane hooks more than the right. On this particular pair, the left-hand lane is tighter, and for some reason, these players just can't get the big hook to swing up. All right, continuing to mark with a spare here in the semifinal game, the winner, Demet Amleto Monticelli. And now Walter Ray Williams, Jr., open to the strike, shooting in the second frame. So, uh, a little two-pin on the right lane. Walter told me before we went on this championship round, he was really worried about this right-hand lane, but he hit it very well the first match. And his trouble is that the amount is hooking, as you see him right on the edge of the lane, and he throws the ball through the break. He does not want to go high, so he figures a light hit is a better percentage. He's struggling a little bit. So the defending champion of this event, uh, marked with a spare as we go to Parker Bone, the third. Steve, it looked like that left lane gave you a little bit of problem this afternoon. Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, I think that's going to be the key. Uh, be interested to see if either one of the guys have a, have a power game. We're going to be able to get it back on 35 without it hooking early. I think that will definitely be the key. There you have it, Chris. That left lane's a key. All right. Oh, boy. Come on. Come on. As you see, Walter conquered the left lane. A good lesson to be learned here. If a lane is very tight and you have a hang spot, as we saw Hoskins have a hang spot, we saw Pete Weber in his first frame have a little hang spot, you have to go straighter with the shot. Most people think you can crank it up to go around it. That is not true. That will be your downfall. Peter should hit this lane very well. This is the one that swings back. He says this ball really hit hard, and watch this thing as it deflects. The ball hits the 1-3 and almost bounces into the 10. I hope that's uh, at least a 14 or 15-pound ball, Peter, because it, it really bounced off. That's a tough shot. There is Tracy Weber. A lot of these power players on the tour, uh, we see uh, Steve Jaros, who's been in the finals a lot of times, Pete Weber, Dave D'Intermont, are using lighter bowling balls. They're using 14 and 15 pound balls. They figure they get less solid taps. However, you do pay a little percentage or a little of, of a... Uh, you, you pay a little bit of a problem with uh, of carrying on the light hits like Peter. Semi-final match as we're in North Brunswick, New Jersey, where the weather has been well, rather damp lately, but birds of a feather, uh, they don't mind. You're looking at Big Jack Cordusky, the tournament chairperson, very efficient bowling executive, and always good to see when we come back to Carolier Lanes. Walter Ree, Ray leads by one, can make it 11. Wonderful match. Like a boxing match. Punch, counter, punch. That was Walter's best shot in the last five or six uh, frames. He actually, when he threw the ball, he just let it go. He knew it was solid. Last year's Donny Petraglia Open champion where he defeated Pete Weber in match one. This is match three. He's already won two, and now he has the three-bagger. Weber has to step it up. Trails by 21, fifth frame, the full approach. And he's going to saw on it. what happens when your carry goes bad. His ball hit weak in the third frame, so now he wants to put a little more juice to it, so he snaps it around with his wrist, and the ball goes high. He's in a dilemma. If he throws this nice, smooth shot, he doesn't strike. If he puts too much on it, it goes high. All right. Uh, Parker Bone, the third, is with the tournament leader. Here with the uh, Lombre from Venezuela, Amleto Monticelli. Amleto, you devastated him last night. Is that going to continue today? Well, Parker, I'm going to do definitely the best uh, to continue as well as I did last night. 
but uh, absolutely it's not up all to me. It's up to the men upstairs, too. <laughs> there you have it, Bo. He's going to get him. Good point. He bowled two 300 games last night. He's a little amazed how they danced off the deck. Even uh, Walter A. gave him a little tap. The old saying, hit him light and watch him fight. And there they did. Coming out with a strike, but Walter Ray Williams Jr. has the upper hand, six frame, 21 pin lead. Ooh. Wow, was he unlucky there. Walter knows he's thrown a really good shot, puts the maximum effort in it. Solid seven. And I'll bet you I didn't see 10 of those all week, Chris. We see some solid eights, some solid nines. He left a couple of those in his 42nd game last night. But no solid sevens. Bad break. You know, tomorrow night on ABC, it's a Mother's Day premiere double on, feature. Man. First at 7, 6 Central. Third Rocks, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Danny Glover, Christopher Lloyd, and Tony Danza star in the network premiere of Angels in the Outfield. Then, the world premiere miniseries event, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, starring Michael Caine, <laughs> Mia Sara, and Patrick Dempsey, all tomorrow night on ABC. Here in New Jersey, Walter Ray is starring with another strike in the seventh frame. All right, he is uh, the leader by 20, as we'll be back momentarily. This is the way uh, Bill Burton and I see the championship um, pair here at Carroll Lanes. And there's our ABC colleague, Manny Cabral, one of our great, great friends with his lady, Maureen. And he's a great bowling fan. Mm -hmm. Now Pete Weber, seventh frame, semifinal match, trails by 20, needs a strike. Oh. He wants the crowd to get with him. After that shot, he deserves to have them because that was something. Well, Pete's not zero, and he gets a terrific break to stay close in the match and cut Walter Ray's lead down to ten pins. The two pin goes to the sideboard, trips the four into the nine. He can make it a dead even match through eight frames with a strike here. Eighth frame. I think he knew it when he let go of it. Once again, the left lane is the story of the day. Walter Ray Williams Jr. playing the straight shot. The big crankers with the rainbow ball just having all sorts of trouble over there. They send it wide and soft. It goes high. They speed it up. It sails by. Pete Weber in trouble. Oh! Just in a day's work, says Pete. You bet. I can see his dad, Dick, in St. Louis, and um, his mom, Juanita, coming right out of the chairs. Super shot to keep him in the match. Walter Ray Williams, Jr., you just can't let him get too far in front of you. Right now, he leads by 14. at 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central and Pacific from Emerson Fittipaldi Speedway in Brazil. The Rio 400. The defending champion is Ande Ribeiro. Tune in tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern, 1.30 Central and Pacific on ABC Sports, a track name for a wonderful champion, Emerson Fittipaldi. And his nephew, Christian Fittipaldi, out with a broken leg till June. Foundation night. Such respect for each other. They show it after every good shot. Mandatory that Pete Weber strike here in the ninth and tenth frames. Only chance he has. This was the state where two men met, oh, about 38 years ago and decided the PBA would be a good thing. I'm speaking of our friends Frank Esposito and Eddie Elias, both ailing. We hope they're enjoying the telecast. So at Echo Lanes right here in New Jersey, Bo, where all you folks got your um, organization going. Pete Weber has to get over in here and just put all he can get on it. Hopefully he can get a strike and stay in the match. It's over. So Walter Ray, um, 
will have a chance to take back the money lead by a few thousand if he can go all the way and pick up a check for 30 because 27,000 actually separate the two. You know, it's interesting how Walter has dominated here with his straight style against these crankers. Walter has defeated his opponents as Pete's wife went on by 51 pins a game coming into this match and he can beat Weber by 54, make it 64 if he strikes out after Pete throws one in the moat. Now, Pete just testing little test shot here to see which way the wind's blowing, and obviously it is not blowing, is not blowing south. <laughs> Ball made no difference. Walter has a potential 259. Just finishing out. 238, that will be enough. A spare and a strike. To go along with his 225 and his 268 and his three victories, and now he will be meeting Amleto Monticelli for the championship. Let's kind of get even time for Walter Ray. Walter Ray opened two times in the ninth and tenth frames in the semifinal match in the AC Delco Classic, our opening telecast on the ABC Tour this year, to let Weber win. So it's get even time. They're one and one on television this year. We'll see them fight it out again at a later date. Walter's the winner today. Great winners. Pete with 22, and of course Walter Ray has 22. All right, this ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. We're back again, and now we recap what has happened up to this point. Walter Ray Williams Jr. has won three matches in the first nine strikes, 268 to 199, and then with eight, 225 to 192. And here he came back in the third match to uh, defeat a nemesis, Pete Weber, by 238 to 195. And the championship match will be coming up very, very soon. I'm Chris Shankel, and Bo and I are always impressed with the um, charity that charities that are helped here by this particular tournament. It's a whole list of them and um, all worthy causes, believe me. Some like the Tournament of Champs, the Institute for Children with Cancer and other disorders. Well, Lee Livingston, as you see him right there, has raised over $150,000 and is really the man who is really the backbone of making this all work. Just a super guy and I hope they really appreciate him out here in New Jersey. And, and as you see a Veterans Memorial, this was presented to Lee Livingston and another somewhat similar one to Johnny Petragli who spent some time in Vietnam by the bowlers that bowled in the Silver Spoke Classic and Danny Wiseman and Martin Frost won that tournament and then Chris two yeah. weeks we're coming up with the King of the Hill the winner of this tournament will start back with that showboat King of the Hill at Harrisburg Open that'll be the first time and then finally we if all you computer folks America Online ABC Sports you can always tune us up on Inside Sports and we have a hot link to the PBA. So enjoy it and enjoy this championship game. Walter Ray Williams Jr. and Amleto Monticelli. This should be a barn burger. Amleto with um, 16 PBA championships. Walter Ray with 22. They've been head to head before. Walter shoots first. In the pocket. Woo. The second straight week that a man has come from the first match to contend for the title. Tim Chris did it in the Sebring Open two weeks ago. Walter Ray Williams Jr. has defeated three person, three opponents so far today. But he has a man who is tough with a bowling ball and probably as mentally tough as any player on the PBA Tour. Hamleto Monticelli. A 6-10 on the right lane. And not the kind of shot he wants. He's trying to take a lesson from watching the other opponents that throw the big hook ball, the rainbow shot. Hamleto straightening it down a little bit, but got too straight. Goes high, breaks up the split, and comes away with a spare. 
And Leonardo Monicelli cashing in 15 consecutive tournaments. Now to gain the tournament lead, he bowled two 300 games and a 290 in uh, his last five games last night. And one of the most interesting ones is you see Amleto going to be on the left side of the approach. He'll be in this area. Now he's not going to try to hook it over in this area like some of the other players. He's going to try to be more between the second and third arrows. And he'll drift a little this way, this way, and then cut it right loose around the third arrow. The player of the year back to back in 89 and 90 crossed over and he's now going to have to try for another spare. Well, as I said earlier, the easiest way to stop or slow down a big cranker is oil the lanes where he can't swing it back. And we've seen Hoskins struggle, and we've seen Amleto struggle, and obviously Walter Ray in the driver's seat in the early going. So Walter Ray is back up and shooting in the second frame, strike working, and Amleto with two spares. He just got a little soft with this shot. He knows on the right-hand lane that he's not going to make any moves. He's not going to move left if the ball starts to hook. As you see it drifting high, that ball was set and solid in the first match. So Walter Ray, in his last four shots in this lane, will zip it up with more speed. Okay. Park up on the third on uh, the lanes. <laughs> Pete, you filled all the frames, even the gutter one shot. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Well, you know, I, I was confused out there. My blue ball just didn't seem to hook enough, and my, my purple one overhooked. Except that, that last ball, <laughs> ball it, it just didn't hook at all. He'll be back next week. And other words. So, of course, we love the way the junior. He has 40 to the second to strike up, and Monticelli now. Boy from Barracas, the Mito, Venezuela. Wonderful person. What a terrific lane move by Amleto Monicelli. We watched the other three power players, Weber, Hoskins, struggle, and Chris the same way. By not getting the ball wide enough, he went out by the channel. Walter Ray knows he now has an opponent that if he can hit this left-hand lane, it's going to give him all the competition he can handle. So far, Walter has outscored his opponents by 48 pins a game today. I'm sure he did not intend to get that ball down about the fourth or fifth board, and you see it go left across to the Brooklyn immediately, where we saw the previous frame get it out to the very first board and flirt with the edge. Look at this trajectory, right over the third arrow, but out to about the seventh board, where in the previous frame on the right-hand lane, he went out to the very edge, and I think that's the only way he's going to be able to conquer this left lane. This is a championship match for $30,000 to the winner, and today's champion will walk away with the money and, of course, this beautiful trophy. The Professional Bowlers Tour on ABC Sports, brought to you by Head & Shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes, and Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. The applause uh, originating at the Carroll Airlines. Coming in from Akron, uh, the reigning commissioner of the Professional Bowlers Association, Mark Gerberich. Walter Ray Williams' fourth frame leads by one pin championship match can make it 11.
you can hear Walter say, wow, he tried moving farther out in the lane. There's not much more room to move. He'll be in the gray board or the gutter, whatever you want to call it. And uh, he just needs to keep his ball speed up on that shot. He's right in this match, championship match. You don't have time to fiddle around. Just joining us, Walter Ray won the first three matches with scores of 268, 225, and didn't write down the other final. Butch, what was the other final? Very respectable. Three great matches by Walter Ray. Now he's meeting the tournament leader, Hamleta Monticelli. Tough competitor. Monticelli made a good shot on this lane in the third frame. Let's see if he can duplicate that and then get zeroed on the left. Perfect. Yes. I mentioned Butch in giving me that score. It's Butch Soper, PBA member and keeps us honest here. It's Saturday afternoon. Well, the man they call El Hombre out here, as you see Walter Ray uh, brushing off his shoes, he approaches a little bit slippery here, so he takes a wire brush and cleans him up. He's more down the center, right in here. Now, he needs to get the ball quickly out to the edge. He cannot get the ball to the center of the lane. Watch this shot. This will determine a lot on what's going to happen in the match. Mm. The right shot, uh, just not a real good result. He blows the five right over the top of the seven. That would have put Amleto in the lead. But this match has all the signs of going down to the 10th frame. This is the first player that I feel today has been zeroed in enough on the championship pair to contend with Deadeye. Chris, I just have a feeling the pace is going to pick up right here. It's been a little bit lethargic in the first five frames. I think Walter's going to go to the whip. And Amleto can see the finish line as he cogitates on the side, eyes down. He's ready to go. Let's see what happens. Five frames left. Oh, solid nine. You can't ask for anything more than that. Polly graduate couldn't figure that one out. Well, no deflection, Chris. He's got a tremendous angle of the pocket. See the ball just drive right through the one three five zone. The five should deflect the ball into the nine. It doesn't. As his wife looks on, saying, "Hey, bad break, Walter, but you lead by one." Here are the uh, PBA average leaders. You see that Pete Weber tops them with two twenty five and Emletto number five two twenty plus. Walter Ray just in fourth, not just in fourth, but, and in the money department, that's for this year. Parker Bone, our interviewer today, number one. And if Walter Ray can win here today, he will regain the career money lead from Pete Weber. in the seventh frame for Amleto. One of the bonuses that goes along with winning this match today, he will be one of the players in our Showboat King of the Hill match, which will be our opening match at the Harrisburg Open May 31st. So it'll be an interesting bonus, plus there's a lot more on the line. Now, nobody has been ahead of Walter Ray all day long. Right now, Amleto has a chance here in the eighth frame to put Walter in arrears by nine. And then... Wow! I watched the ball. I saw Amleto, his disappointment, as you see how to make it. Mark Roth has bounced the seven out, the ten out into the seven. That's the same strategy 
Amleto is going to try to use, but boy, and it dis oh, and he throws it in the channel. Disappointed Amleto Monticelli, and Walter Ray Williams, Chris, just about jumped out of his seat when he saw that 7-10 split. Hmm. Here, Walt. Amleto, a little bit discouraged, gets out of his game plan, tries to throw it extra hard to bounce the 10 up, loses a shot to the right. Walter Ray, once again in the driver's seat. This is the key shot right here. Walter Ray. Winning three and now trying for the title. Re-rack, re-rack, re-rack. Re Each player allowed two re-racks in a match uh, for various reasons. Either the pins are off spot well, or just wants to take you your time. Looking, so. <laughs> Talking to one of the officials and says, uh, hey. So he's either saw a pin a little bit off spot. They look Come perfect on. to me there. 25 pin lead. This is a tournament if he can strike here. Does he want to successfully defend this championship? Yes. After an open frame in the eighth, now shooting in the ninth. That re-rack may have been the difference, Chris. He gets a love tap on the ten with the six, and if the pins are just slightly off spot, that would not have happened. Amleto on the ropes must strike. The tournament leader so far this year, seven wins, seven losses. If Amleto does not strike on the next two balls, he has no chance of winning, and he would become the eighth victim to go down to defeat as a tournament leader. Absolutely must strike on the next two shots to have any chance. Walter Ray Williams, Jr. wins the title. It's unbelievably how well Amleto bowled, and he ends up going to be bowling in the 180s. It's amazing. From the third frame on, he just shoots just super shots and got nothing to show for it, Chris. The guy that came from 24th in match play to the very top was spectacular bowling last night. Now, just at one game, not doing what he wanted to do. Well, and the kind of the keys at night, Chris, the lanes hooked a lot more at night, and all the crankers that went against Walter Ray today uh, could not get the big hook balls to come back, especially on the left-hand lane, and that was their undoing as Walter just cruises to the title here, a potential 240, but it's just a mute point from here on in. Well, I hope the, the play of Walter Ray made a birthday party that had to be interesting. Lori Krakowski's nephew, Ryan, who was two, already trying to bowl. All right, that's yeah. a good age to start. <laughs> well, we had 14,500 plus spectators come through the turnstiles here this week, and Walter Ray Williams Jr. delighted the crowd here today. And here is a late starter in bowling. Number one in the world, now has 23 titles. He regains the money lead by some $3,000. Standing ovation for Stockton, California's University of Cal Poly graduate. And a hug from Paige Pennington, his wife. Two thirty-seven to one eighty-four. Brought her on a war game great performance here at Carroll Lane, getting the congratulations from the crowd, and rightfully so. Okay, we will return after this. Well, 23 titles for Walter Ray Williams Jr. He ran the table against a stellar field today. $30,000 first place, and with the winner, my partner, Chris Schenkel. Wow. Deserved applause, Walter Ray. Uh, it's Lee Livingston and Johnny Petraglia here. 32 strikes was the re-rack the key. 
Uh, no, but uh, this this right lane, it seemed like the one three were getting just a pinch open, and I did leave a couple of solid sevens on that lane. So I don't know if that was the reason why, but when you're when you're in the tenth frame or whatever, you you want a good shot or something. You you want to those pins to be right where they're supposed to be and, and throw the best shot you can and fortunately things worked out for me. <laughs> I guess. Um, let's hear from uh, Amleta Monticelli. Bo's with him right now. Well, I wish I was with him, Chris, but uh, oh. I don't blame him for <laughs> running off. He left a switch in 7-10, a couple of solid wraps, rolled a 185 game that looked like it could have been a 255, but, you know, Walter's on a roll. He's bowling great and uh, he's uh, got everything going for him, so I can't blame Amleto. He's like Elvis, I have left the building. Back to you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, um, let's get some money in your pocket. Okay. Paige is out here, and uh, <laughs> Lee Livingston has a check. I remember when a year ago I did the same thing. All the way with Walter Ray from number five right on through. Congratulations, $30,000. Thanks, Lee. I'd like to thank Lee Livingston and, and all the staff here at Carolina Lanes. They did a great job, all the spectators, all the scorekeepers, mechanics, everybody here. You're great here in New Jersey. <laughs> Could there be a better name on a tournament than Johnny Petraglia? Johnny with a beautiful trophy. Uh, Walter, uh, just tremendous performance all day today against a truly great field. And, uh, well, one of the toughest parts, it is all glass. You have to hold it now. I want to get it out of my hands. Congratulations, defending. Very welcome. Thanks, Johnny. I'd like to thank Johnny Petraglia. He's a good friend of mine. It's great that we've got a, a, a tournament named after him. It's a great, a great person, and uh, to be with a great company like Brunswick, it's a great sponsor of professional bowling, and uh, as you can tell, a good maker of bowling balls. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was well, that a heck of a commercial? Okay, Amleto's here. Well, Elvis returns. He's back in the building. Amleto, the crowd likes you. Uh, you're one of my favorites, but obviously the left-hand lane didn't like Amleto Monicelli. Well, I mean, I know I did my best. Uh, I think I bought as good as Walter. And he just he got the carry and didn't get it. Uh, and this is called bowling. So someday you're going to carry, someday you're not. You know, uh, my late father told me if you get there often enough, things come around and go around. I am sure, and I'll predict now, that next time Amleto's in the top five, he'll end up a winner. What do you think? I do believe so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one of the real nice guys in professional bowling. He finished second, Chris. You have two of the nice guys with you with Lee Livingston. Back to you, pal. Listen, um, uh, you have to finish second every now and then to appreciate winning. <laughs> ask, ask Walter Ray, what was it, uh, how many seconds do you have? Uh, only 28. <laughs> So you youngsters in the audience, take that little bit of philosophy that we've passed on to you. On to Toronto? Uh, yes. Uh, in fact, I'm going to probably leave this afternoon. Uh, i got a little packing to do. My wife did a little shopping on the way up here. So uh, <laughs> we got to rearrange some stuff and get up there. I'm supposed to bowl a pro-am tomorrow night. Uh, and then the mm -hmm. tournament starts, obviously, on Wednesday. And I'd like to be uh, on that TV show next week. Uh, I'd like to make it two wins in a row and then defend in uh, Harrisburg in a couple of weeks. Of course. <laughs> and there's the King of the Hill. Yeah, you're in it already, pal. Yeah, last time it was uh, Ron Williams, so this might as well be Walter Ray Williams this time around. <laughs> That's it. All right. Thank you, uh, Johnny Lee. Walter Ray, congratulations, defending champion back-to-back -back here. We thank you all, and happy Mother's Day tomorrow. Thank you. Today's telecast of the Professional Bowlers Tour was produced by Carol Letty, directed by Norm Salmon, technical director Michael Carmen, associate director Freddie Jeff King, production manager Joe Alvarado, technical operations manager Dennis Zabo, stage manager Tom Gatewood, assistant to the producer Brian Zwolinski. Stay tuned for Wide World of Sports next.